Opened in 1844, the Palm House here at Kew Gardens is home to, as the name suggests, an awful lot of palm species. Now, palms are the record breakers of the plant kingdom, known for the largest leaf, the largest seed, but they're also critical in keeping ecosystems stable and functioning. But it's also been estimated that perhaps as many as half of all the species are threatened with extinction. Let's dig deeper. No matter who you are, whether you're a botanical expert or not, anybody can recognise a palm tree because they have such a distinctive look. Well, the typical vision of a palm is of a coconut dangling over a beach. But in practice, palms are primarily found in rainforests. They can really grow anywhere where there is plenty of water and there is no frost. We see different patterns of palm species richness across the planet. So for example, there are only 65 species in Africa, but more than a thousand in tropical Asia. There are fossils of palms, of palm pollen, that go back even as far as 100 million years. And we know that palms have been part of rainforest or rainforest-like ecosystems since that time. Palms are monocots. Now, monocots are a major group within the flowering plants. There are about 70,000 species of them. The monocots are generally sort of soft, herbaceous, floppy plants like the orchids, the lilies, the grasses. They have linear leaves. But the amazing thing about the palms is that the way they have escaped all the constraints of being a monocot to become great big canopy giants. Palms have a very smart way of growing. When they germinate on the forest floor, they sit there quietly for years sometimes, building up a really huge stocky bud at the top of the stem. And then once that bud is big enough, they can produce these vast trunks that push their way through into the forest canopy and large stems can then produce really large structures, large appendages that dangle off those stems. So that's really the reason why palms have these highly distinctive leaves that come in two forms, the feather leaf and the fan leaf, with a few other exceptions. You don't really expect to see hundreds of palm species here in the UK, but in Kew's Palm House we have 168 species because within the closed canopy of the building we can keep the temperatures high as well as the humidity. But you can also find a small number of palm species such as the Chusan palm, the really hardy ones growing outside here in the UK. Palms are unbelievably useful to people. We say that they're in the top three plant families for usefulness to, to humans, but the thing that's really special about palms is the sheer number of uses that they have and the way those uses support people who really live in tough economic circumstances. So for example, here we have uh, a sugar palm from Borneo and these sugar palms can be tapped. You can cut the flower stalk here, take the sap and boil it down to make beautiful palm sugar. But you can also take the fibre off the stem to thatch your house. These leaflets might be stripped off and used to weave a basket or a hat. These long leaf stalks are so robust they can be used in construction. You can even take these leaflets and remove fibres from them, such as raffia fibre that people use in gardens and flowering arrangements. Palms produce a great diversity of different kinds of fruit, but in many senses they're all rather similar. Um, they have a fleshy uh, outer pulpy part, which if you split open contains a hard seed. There may be one, two or three seeds usually. Um, this seed, if you split it open, is bony and white, almost like ivory, and in fact some seeds have even been used to make buttons. This is the African oil palm, and this is what palm oil comes from. Now palm oil is one of the most important products from the palm family. It's used in cosmetics, it's used in detergents, it's in baked goods. In fact, perhaps half of all packaged products in the UK supermarkets contain palm oil. In the wild, the oil palm grows in the African rainforests, but it's now planted across the tropics, and that's the problem. Oil palm cultivation has led to widespread destruction of rainforest habitats and huge carbon emissions. And this is the challenge that we face. We need the oil palm. It's important to us, and it's also important to the people who produce it. But how do we get it without causing such environmental devastation? Luckily, an increasing amount of palm oil that's being used 
is coming from sustainable sources. But you can do more by demanding more sustainable palm oil in the things that you use. Look out for markers on the products you buy to check that they say they come from sustainable palm oil plantations. One of the palms that most people know is, of course, the coconut. The coconut itself is the fruit of the coconut palm. This is technically a droop or a stone fruit, like a plum where the seed itself is encased in a hard bony layer. If you were to slice open a coconut, you would see a thick fibrous layer, then the hard stony shell, and then inside you would see a layer of white meat and within a watery liquid. The coconut fruit is incredibly useful. The outer fibrous layer can be used to beat out fibres which can be turned into rope, into matting, into sacks, into garden compost. The shell can be used as a container and then of course the white meat within, you can eat it dried and whole. And in the middle you have this watery liquid which is the coconut water which can be drunk to rehydrate. Now the coconut is grown all over the world. It's really important to people and has been moved around the planet, so much so that we don't really know where it comes from. The coconut produces a really large seed, but there is one palm that beats it hands down, and that is the coco de mer. That produces a seed shaped like this that can weigh as much as 20 kilos. It's the largest seed in the plant kingdom. This epic palm is Tahina spectabilis. Now this was discovered as recently as 2007. After a tip-off, we were able to send our team in Madagascar out to the limestone crags in western Madagascar where this was reported to exist. We found just handfuls of these palms, but we were able to collect specimens and officially describe it and give it its scientific name. Today, we're very concerned about the conservation of Tahina. However, we have been able to arrange a legal export of seed that has been distributed to palm experts around the world who are now growing it in gardens as a conservation policy for the future. If we didn't have palms, whole ecosystems would be threatened. We'd see the structure of the forest change, we'd see animals starve for lack of fruit, and we'd see humans losing some of the most important things that palms produce to keep them alive and happy. So I hope I've convinced you that there is no more important group of plants than the palms. Thank you for watching and please come down to Kew to see some of the amazing palms that we have growing here. Thanks for watching this episode of Dig Deeper. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss an episode. If you'd like to learn more about the work that Kew does, visit our website for more information.